Nabla has launched a lot, a lot of palettes and I hope that there are more to come. I have every single palette, even those that are discontinued. So today let's make a ranking of them. Hello and welcome! My name is Eva and today ranking of all Nabla's palettes. Of all palettes they've ever launched 14 palettes! 14! If you recognize this meme, 14, then let, let me know. I have a tower of palettes here and I'm going to start from, let's say, the worst to the best. Of course, it doesn't mean that those the worst are like the worst on the market. It's not like that. All Nabla's palettes have very, very great quality, but today I don't have any reference. The reference are other Nabla's palettes, not like the whole makeup market, so I need to tell you which one is meh and which one is eh, which still doesn't mean that this eh is the best in my collection and this eh is the worst in my collection. I hope that you understand. Of course, this video will be full of swatches, but just in case, if you want to know more about these palettes, if you want to see more tutorials with these palettes and so on, down below, you have playlist, link to the playlist with only Nabla's palettes. Some of these palettes are not going to be like on one place because some of these palettes, in my opinion, are on the same level of being good or being bad. So it will be really hard to really say that this is number one, this is number two, this is number 10. Sometimes number 10 and nine, let's say, will be just the same level. I hope that you know what I mean. So let's start from the Hmm, I could say that the worst palette, but unfortunately I put it on the 14th place only because it's discontinued and we are talking about so blooming palette. Honestly, I appreciate it so much that I would really like to put it somewhere higher and I think that it would be in the top of my favorite palettes, somewhere maybe fifth or sixth a place, but unfortunately it's discontinued, so I can't, I just can't give it much more love in this whole ranking. This palette is actually the second palette Nabla launched, so it still have this, let's say, a little bit older formula in mattes and in shimmers. Because to be honest, I noticed that with time this matte formula also a little bit changed. It's not exactly the same as in this, the first palette. Although this palette isn't the most prettiest palette when we are talking about blindness. Although this palette isn't the most interesting when we are talking about different finishes, it has a special place in my heart. I really hope that Nabla will create at least similar palette to this because this was like very perfect palette for spring and early summer. I love it. I love it till this day. Like, look at these colors. These colors are absolutely amazing. They scream spring. All these pastels and light shades, they are beautiful. But unfortunately, from unknown reasons, Nabla decided that they won't produce it anymore. The only minus of this palette is this shade, which is pain in the naughty part of my back. <laughs> Because this formula isn't just my favorite, it's a little bit chunky, else a lot of fallout when I'm using this, but other than that, this is still a very good palette and I still very much love it and I'm still very much crying that not everyone has this opportunity to try it and unfortunately no one will have. So now let's start the real ranking, place 13 and 12. Honestly, I can't decide which one is which one because both of these palettes are as much bad. And I'm talking about Secret Palette and Poison Garden Palette. And don't get me wrong, these are not very bad palettes, but unfortunately has some, let's say, issues. Let's maybe start with Secret Palette. Both of these palettes, by the way, have 15 eyeshadows and I don't know, maybe it's a curse because both of these palettes have some issues. Secret palette, unfortunately, I don't have two shades in this palette because they 
pissed me off so much that I just removed them from this palette to never be able to use them. The shades that were here totally were able to destroy my whole makeup. This shade here, Mea Culpa, was dark brown shade that wasn't really something special when we are talking about Nabla's palettes. Like, you know, there are some shades in Nabla's palettes that are presence in every single palette. Like, in almost, let's not talk about cuties. In every single palette, you have to have dark brown. In every single Nabla palette, you have to have something pinkish. In every single Nabla palette, you have to have like some just random transition brown shade. In every Every single Nabla palette and also in every single Nabla palette you need to have something that is let's say champagne or gold toppery or not here we have this shade which is topper green topper and it's beautiful but here this shade I promise was something like inner corner highlight however it was the worst shimmer I've ever tried by Nabla it wasn't blinding at all this is the thing that I have with this palette these shimmers are worse than shimmers in the first palette Nabla ever created how this happened like this palette wasn't second or third palette Nabla created this palette was fourth and the Poison Garden was the third palette and they are the worst palette in my opinion from the Nabla Nabla palette assortment Mats are okay but like I said I one day just sat and swatch these shimmers with the shimmers from Soul Blooming and with the shimmers from Dreamy like the first Dreamy original the one the first palette the first the first ever palette Nabla launched and those shimmers are nice although they are old Although this is the first like shimmer formula by Nabla, they are okay. And these are just eh, like they are they are something between shimmer and satin. Although to be honest, I know much more shimmery satins. Let's say that it speaks volume. Overall, I really like the color story. And overall, I really like especially these three shades here. And overall, this palette isn't like the worst palette I've ever tried. But these two shades. <laughs> I forgot to tell you what this shade did to me. Like I said, this, not shimmery at all, but this one was so patchy. Ugh. And by the way, this is the palette, uh, the first palette I reviewed on my channel, which uh, back then I was really satisfied with this palette. But obviously with time, I'm uh, changing my makeup techniques. I learn, I improve my skills. And this shade wasn't it anymore. The more I wanted to use this shade, like for example for Smoky, somewhere where I need not patchy shade, then it was failing every single time. Obviously, if you like the color story, then it's still Nabla palette. It's a good palette, but I'm just letting you know that these shimmers aren't it. They are not as blinding as different Nabla shimmers. That's why this palette isn't higher in the ranking. 13 and 12th place is like exequo. It's not higher or lower. This is Poison Garden. What really isn't nice in this palette is that this packaging is not well created. This shade, which is by the way very beautiful shade, broke because I've done this. These eyeshadows are definitely too close to the surface when they should be at least a little bit under you know this background here let's say we have background so eyeshadow should be maybe somewhere here not here and for sure not above the background well here there is a problem just as in a secret palette there is a topper with uh, green particles which by the way is pretty beautiful here we have something similar but with blue particles this topper is absolutely gorgeous this is the biggest plus of these two palettes these toppers they are super cool these shimmers however are better than in the secret palette they are really really more mm, blinding more shimmery more interesting also i have uh, nothing but to say about uh, matte formula except these two blue shades this palette is so low in this ranking only because why putting blue shades which obviously these shades will be the most interesting shades in this palette when they are not good they are not good 
<laughs> Unfortunately, they are super, super patchy. If you want to use them for details, for example, this shade particularly. For example, inner corner, like gentle, gentle uh, pop of color, either inner corner, upper eyelid or lower eyelid, turning it into eyeliner, then sure, these two shades might be very, very good. But if you want to try to make smoky with this shade or to use this shade to blend above your crease, I wouldn't recommend that. They are really, really patchy. They are not the best blue shades I've ever tried. That's why I am so, so impressed by the Cutie Midnight palette, because there is shade dark blue shade in that palette that isn't pigmented, but at least it isn't patchy. These two shades are pretty pigmented, but what about it? It's not worth it for this patchiness. It is not. I even have one video where I used this palette and I switched to different palette only to use different blue shades because I was so so angry <laughs> but i have to admit that shimmers are pretty good in this palette especially this shade craving it's so pretty shade so like i said it's not like this palette is totally bad palette and i haven't used it and i hate it it's just let's say less interesting palette from all the palettes in this whole ranking but i really love this palette and i have a lot a lot of uh, fun with it and by the way you know that this is the only orange shade in all nabla palettes really i swear if you're looking for orange shade in nabla palettes then the orange shade is only here as well as this shimmer next to it which is shame but we'll get to it because there is one palette that in my opinion should be orange and it isn't but we'll get to it this ranking of course is only my personal opinion <laughs> that's why i recorded video with all those nablas gems before this ranking because sometimes the palette you should pay attention to and the palette i really like not always they are the same palettes on place 11th we have nabla cutie palette nude so the first palette it's low because of the well formula and color story on the one hand the color story is gorgeous because it's nude and cool toned nude which is very important that we don't have oranges and reds, reddish browns here. We have more cool toned shades here. But unfortunately, first of all, this is nude. I personally am not the fan of nude shades. And I think that you know that already. So I can't place this higher than, I don't know, berry palette or midnight palette. So it's not really my thing. Doesn't mean, of course, I don't use it. These two shimmers are, oh, gorgeous, absolutely blinding and stunning. But this palette doesn't have really true matte shade. These shades that we have here, this is satin, and these two, actually three with this one, are latex matte. Latex matte formula is something between, I would say, satin, matte, and shimmer. They are not true, true, true matte shades. They are a little bit like chunky. The formula is totally different. You would feel it immediately while swatching it and on eyes you will see the difference immediately. They are beautiful because they are like matte shades, but in the same time they look a little bit like wet eyeshadows. However, this formula is sometimes very difficult to work with. You can't just tap it into your eye. You can't just, I don't know, blend circles and that's it. You need to really massage it into your eyelid. And the more dense brush, the better this work with these eyeshadows will be. However, I don't like dense brushes, especially for blending as much. So not always I want to deal with this formula. Not always I have time to deal with either dense brush and blending or just blending with my brushes. But then this massaging stuff, this massaging process is not so easy so quick there's a lot of fallout so i like this uh, latex matte formula but i understand why a lot of people 
don't like it and I'm not really sometimes in the mood to just apply it. I'm not sometimes in the mood to wear it on my eyes. Sometimes there are some days where I just don't need and don't like this more matte but wet finish. Coral Cutie Palette. This palette is different than the previous one because it doesn't contain latex matte formula. However, it has its own issues, let's say. Shimmers, beautiful, gorgeous. These two are like super pretty. This one especially, it's a really, really blinding. This is also good, although this is totally different shimmer than this one and this one. And here we have red, which is a little bit like something between shimmer and satin. I am not sure if this is really satin. I don't remember every single formula and every single Nabla palette. I used to remember, but now I am not. <laughs> the problem with this palette that I personally have is that we have here two matte shades that are, in my opinion, not enough. The darkest brown and, let's be honest, pink. If this shade would be something different, maybe transition brownish pink shade, taupe shade maybe, something like this actually. Look at this color story and imagine that we have this, sh this shade, so like something between, a little bit like dusty rose shade, something between rosy shade and brown, and this palette would be much better in my opinion with such shade. The issue with some cutie palettes I have and this palette is one of them, is too many shimmers and not enough matte shades. I get it, I get it, we don't need as many matte shades. <sighs> okay, listen, I'm from Poland and uh, I remember when I started my makeup journey and blending different matte shades wasn't a thing. Like matte shades on your eyelids were max two. Transition shade and the darkest one in outer corner. And that's all. Shimmers were all you need. Shimmers were the most important. And I think that this trend is like very common. When you think of it, I think that is pretty, pretty common because look at the indie brands. Shimmers, 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 multi-chromes, duochromes, shimmers, 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 glitters. Mats are like almost not existing in some indie brands. So I understand the concept. I understand that, uh, well, you can use this shade all over your eyelid in a small amount so it won't be so intense and so dark. And the most important are shimmers. I know that there are people who just use shades like these in outer corner no transition shade, like no eye contouring whatsoever and only shimmer all over your eyelid or two shimmers or even three shimmers and of course shimmer on lower eyelid and in the inner corner. So for people like I just described, this palette probably will be perfect. In my opinion, there is too much shimmers not enough uh, matte shades and not even not enough, like not enough in numbers, but not enough even in colors. This is maybe a little bit too dark. This is maybe a little bit too bright and pink, too coral. And I know that this palette is named coral, but then maybe, I don't know, transform this shade into more taupe shade but you know, more warm toned taupe shade, so like reddish brownish taupe, this palette would be much more cool in my opinion this way. Another palette that also have the same issues, however, is higher because of the shimmers, it's Metropolitan. This palette, when we are talking about matte shades, is even worse than coral. Also only two matte shades very bright, almost neon pinkish coral shade and very dark brown. Rest are shimmers. <laughs> but this palette is higher because these shimmers... Do you see this? <laughs> do you see this? <laughs> these shimmers are just much more interesting than shimmers in cutie coral palette. That's why it's on higher place. A lot, lot of times I contour my eye with different Nabla palette and go back to this palette only for these two eyeshadows or for this topper, which by the way, this topper is really nice because it's three chrome. It has three different particles all in this white, but in reality, transparent base. 
and I absolutely love this topper. Nabla has the most beautiful toppers I've ever tried. Well, there was some toppers I loved more, but they are not available anymore. However, I have them because I bought them just in case and I have even so unopened <laughs> just in case and stuck in my drawer. But from these available on the market, I think that to Banabla stoppers are, are one of the most beautiful ones. So here we are with the Metropolitan palette, which is a really nice palette. But again, just like a color palette, has some issues. Metropolitan was on 9th place, on 8th place we have Analog palette. This palette goes back to latex matte formula with this shade. However, I must admit that latex matte formula in this palette is different than in previous palettes. I must admit that with this uh, latex matte uh, I like to work more. What is my issue with this palette actually? It's not this latex matte. It's not, I don't know, these uh, shimmers, this dark shimmer or the color story. What I have problem with this palette is what colors do you see on the packaging? Maybe I am blind, but I can see a lot of orange. And what we see inside? Browns. And this is my only issue with this palette. This is a really nice palette. I really like it. If you like warm toned and still nude color stories, then this is the palette you need. Especially this duochrome is absolutely stunning shade. These two shades are also very good. This is very nice formula. I love it very much. But why? Why these two aren't orange more? Why these two are just brown shade? Just generic warm toned brow shades. Come on. I need some orange. That's why I said when I was talking about Poison Garden palette that they are the only one orange shade in the entire Nabla palette collection. So yeah, it's not the lowest place because this palette is good, the color story is beautiful, but the color story isn't as promising as the packaging. Seventh place and white berry palette. This palette has some issues, but at least we get what we expect to get. So palette full of berry shades. This palette is absolutely pretty and absolutely beautiful. There's one latex matte here. It's really nice, the color is really nice. I'd use it in my inner corner, so maybe that's why uh, this shade doesn't bother me as much, because I don't have issues to use some more dense brush and more like this triangle between my inner corner, beginning of my brow and arch. This shade, Venom, is extremely, extremely dry. However, what's interesting about this shade is although there is a lot of fallout in the palette because it's so dry, it isn't patchy on eyelids. Let's be honest, it's super good. All these shades are very, very pigmented, no patchiness. There is nothing bad to say about this palette, why it isn't in the first three or five palettes, why it is seventh palette. Well, first of all, like I said, making this ranking wasn't easy. And second of all, I noticed that I don't use it as much. I have no idea why I don't use this palette as often as I should, especially that in this palette we have Alchemy number two. So like the second, the most popular shade in Nabla range. Maybe you know Nabla has alchemy shade, like single eyeshadow, which is super popular shade. They are two different shades, they are not identical. It's as much beautiful. This is one of the prettiest duochrome in my collection, so honestly I have no idea why I don't use this palette as often as I'd wish to, or as I should even. No idea why, and probably that's why it's so low on whole this ranking, because I actually don't have anything bad to say about this color story. You get what you expect from the cover, from the packaging. It's wild berry palette, so you get the palette full of berry shades. Maybe, of course, we can talk about that there are a lot of well, dark shades, there are not enough of light shades like this one, 
But in general, is it bad really? Although this palette is so low on this ranking, it's not the fault of this palette actually. It's pretty good palette and I really like it. Next I have 6th and 5th place and I have no idea which palette is on which because these two palettes have things that I really like and also all these two palettes have some things that would place them on this lower place on the list. So I just... Let's say that this is exec for again 6th and 5th place. So read my mind and side by side nude palette. Let's start maybe with uh, side by side nude palette. This palette is for sure your wet nude dreams if you like nude palettes. I don't. That's why this palette isn't in my number 1, 2 or even 3. It's nude. However, although it's nude, it's pretty beautiful and I believe that this is the only one palette in my collection that is fully nude and that I really like. I have some nude palettes obviously in my collection, for example Carnival and the Antidote is pretty nude, but at the same time that palette has some warm toned shades, orangey, uh, yellowish mustard shades and green shades, so it's not nude entirely and this one, let's be honest, is. Here we have of course some uh, cool toned shades and warm toned shades and even pink shades and some shades especially for example these two are really really cool because they are cool toned so they are not another generic brown transition shades they are something more interesting. Also very big plus in this palette are the finishes of shimmers. There's a lot of finishes here. Minus is that I believe shade Tempera is slightly patchy. Unfortunately, I am not sure if uh, it's patchy for sure. With some shades in this palette, so this one and maybe also Clan, I don't remember right now to be honest, I think that they had some issues. Of course, these weren't like issues you can't build this shade at all in your outer corner. It was more like that if I didn't start with these shades and I tried to add them in my outer corner on other shades, then they had issues. So maybe it's a more issue with oversaturation. Who knows? Honestly, I don't even want to try to check it right now because it doesn't matter because in general this palette is good and for daily use, just for the use this palette is meant to be as let's be honest, nude daily palette with some exceptions for evening uh, nude makeups. This palette is okay and uh, I don't feel the need to make like big and very detailed uh, review to see if uh, every single shade is less or more patchy or not. When I reviewed this palette I haven't noticed any patchiness. I noticed it a few times really when I was working with it privately, like in my private chambers as I like to say, and I can't say if this was the issue with these shades or maybe simply it was the issue with my eyelids because my eyelids sometimes, sometimes even the best eyeshadows can be patchy on my eyes, so good stuff. <laughs> Not recommended, <laughs> but this palette for sure recommended. It's a good palette. But it's nude. Mm. Now let's talk about Read My Mind palette. So either 6th or 5th place, this palette. This palette does some things better than side by side, but also does some things uh, not as good as side by side. What is better in this palette? Besides that it isn't true nude. <laughs> well, what's good in this palette is, let's be honest, bigger variety. So we have here more cool toned shades, more warm toned shades, neutrals, we have everything. Here we have whole row full of cool toned shades. We have some pinks, we have some reds, we have some like dusty rosy shades, we have duochrome. However, this palette is... <sighs> I have some issue with this palette, that's why I can't say if this palette is first or side by side because side by side is nude palette, this palette has some colors, but in the same time this palette is boring. I'm sorry, I said that. It's a great palette if you're looking for something that is neutral, nude, but in the same time with a twist, but not as crazy twist, not super colorful, but in the same time not super nude, not super war-toned, not super cool-toned. It's a nice palette. 
But when I'm thinking about whole range of Nabla palettes, and I'm thinking that this is their recent palette, honestly, when I think of it, I'm getting mad. I would accept it more probably if this year Nabla would launch, uh, I don't know, green cutie or purple cutie or any other palette really that isn't like this. You know what's the most confusing thing, at least I have with this palette, that this palette is quite beautiful, that this palette also have different finishes. Like we have, I think, at least three different finishes when we are talking about shimmers in this palette. So like in side by side, but in the same time, this palette looks so generic in a way. It's just boring. On the one hand, I really love this row. I really love this quote. I really love this quote. I, in general, I really love this section. These sage shades are gorgeous. They are not patchy. I did once makeup with like more 80s, 90s uh, vibes with these shades. Love it. Love that look. Love these shades. But in the same time, I'm looking at this palette and I'm like... <sighs> I feel like side by side nude palette is uh, much more hmm, exciting, inspiring. I don't know. Maybe it's only my feeling. Maybe it's the issue with placement. Maybe it's the issue with so much wasted space. I have no idea. <laughs> For sure, we get what there is on the cover. So we get some sage shades. We get some dusty, reddish, rosy brown shades. So it's not like the cover lies. <laughs> I don't know what's my problem with this palette because I like it, but at the same time I think it's boring. But at the same time I don't know if it should be placed higher or lower than side by side because side by side is much more inspired, but at the same time it's not at all colorful. <sighs> Life is hard. <laughs> the last four palettes. So we are at the very top. Fourth and third place. Another Execfo. I can't choose which one is on fourth, which one is on third place. Platinum and Midnight Cutie Palette. Let's start maybe with Platinum. You can say that it's a nude palette, but it's a cool toned nude palette. And when palette is cool toned, I feel like it's not nude anymore. It's the palette with silvers and greys. And even if this brown shade isn't another generic brown shade because it's cool toned and it's really pretty it matches very nicely to this shade shimmer shade that is above it this dark brown is for sure cool toned dark brown it's not black but it's dark enough i really love it i really love the fact that these two shades are pretty blinding and they have a lot a lot of these no, dude, little little particles they are really 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 nice this formula looks like wet on your eyes because it has so many particles it looks like wet a lot a lot of different particles a lot a lot of sparkly sparkles it's one of the best nablas formula the best shimmer formula very very pretty looks like wet and this come on liquid metal just look at it so pretty so gorgeous i absolutely love this palette and like i said on let's say the same place so either fourth or third it's midnight palette i think it's not a surprise that this palette is here i praised it a lot of times on my channel, especially for this shade, which I know it's maybe surprising because, come on, this is stunning shade. Also, this is another stunning shade. Here we have blue topper, so another... Mm, yes, we have, we have another topper. <laughs> but yes, I praised this palette for this blue shade because I've poison garden this palette just has blue shade that is deep enough can be built up and is not patchy that's all i need when we are talking about dark and colorful eyeshadow like this you know specific colors like for example dark navy blue dark purple dark green these shades very much like to be patchy i don't like patchiness i much more like to build up the pigmentation and don't deal with the patchiness 
And this shade here is something like satin, although it has really like creamy, almost like shimmer formula. Still, it looks very nice on uh, eyes, by the way. Uh, even this shade, I don't complain about the presence of this shade here because it, I think, keeps balance in this palette. Because of this shade, this palette uh, seems to be more even for daily use. By the way, I've done makeup daily makeup with this palette, so it is possible. I absolutely love this palette. I think that this is one of the best with, of course, Platinum and also actually with Wildberry palette. These three are the best mm, cutie palettes. Of course, Metropolitan, uh, Coral and Nude has gorgeous shimmers, but these three have gorgeous color story, gorgeous finishes of shimmers and they are not patchy and that's all I need when we are talking about especially colorful palettes. Ooh. So the big final, first and second place, another execvo. I cannot choose between one and another palette because I love them both and I worked with both of them to create today's makeup look and the more I think of them the more I think that these two palettes are sisters and shouldn't be judged separately. And I'm talking about dreamy palettes. Dreamy one and dreamy two. Which one <laughs> I should start with? Maybe let's start with the dreamy two. So with the younger palette. <laughs> if you're looking for a palette that is really crazy and especially right now, Christmas, New Year's Eve, this is your palette to go. It's so pretty, it has so many finishes, so many shimmers, and at the same time it keeps balance. That's the most important thing that cutie palettes sometimes don't do. Matte, beige, very much on plus. Here we have a little bit darker and a little bit more warm toned brown shade. And here we have very nice transition shade, which is, let's say, like milk and coffee. And also we have two latex matte, this and this one, latex matte. So they are not very easy shades to work with. However, today I work with this one in my outer corner. I had a little fallout. It wasn't anything special. It wasn't so bad. So these two shades are very much okay. So in this palette, we have reddish brownish shade and we also have dark brown that is actually more like a Plum. There's much more purple vibes in this shade than it seems. And we have a lot, a lot of shimmers. From something that can be used as a topper, white gold shimmer, it's really beautiful, to this shade, which is more like a topper, surprisingly, but the topper with base. So it's not topper with a totally transparent base, it has bluish base but it can be treated as topper. Here we have super shiny and shimmery and rich gold. Here we have like more uh, metallic brownish gold shade. These two shades and I think also this one are the same formula. This palette is beautiful. And I have no idea why I'm forgetting about them during the year. I always start to remember about this palette when we are more close to the Christmas season, Black Friday, Christmas, uh, winter in general. I have no idea why. I love this palette so much, so, so much. But like I said, I think this is one of the two sisters. Still, let's be honest, we have only three matte shades here and one is beige which I understand that not many of you maybe even use beige, which is fine, because honestly, at the beginning of my makeup journey, I didn't want to have even beige in my palette. I thought that it was waste of space and why I am even paying for one eyeshadow that I'm for sure going, going to use because I don't even see it on my eyelid. Like, come on, why I need even matte beige? Now matte beige is my life. <laughs> but let's be real. Here we have only two matte colors and uh, these latex matte that aren't matte. So that's why I really like to pair this palette with her older sister and in the same time the oldest palette in general. So the first, the very first Nabla palette. This is the very first palette Nabla ever launched and this palette is beautiful and although it has old formula and although this palette has 
not so exciting shimmers. They are not as blinding and with so many particles and they don't look like wet on eyelids. This palette has soul. Of course, I'm talking with a huge sentiment right now because this is the first Nablus palette, the first... Well, I remember when I was buying it and I was still living in Poland, so yeah, this is a pretty old palette. And I remember that back then, like you have to understand that um, in Poland people are rather more poor than on the West. So for me this palette was pretty expensive and I remember that this was one of my more expensive palettes and I immediately fell in love with it. Matte formula in this palette is so creamy as much as in the So Blooming because these palettes were the first palettes. These mattes are like, they are something different. I noticed that with time Nabla changed their formula. For example, in Midnight palette, this very dark navy blue shade is a little bit dry. I noticed that some shades in Read My Mind palette, so in the most recent Nabla's palettes, are dry and they are nothing alike. Like these mattes. These mattes are just like creamy, like dreamy <laughs> under the finger. It's just so pleasure to touch them. Also the colors are lovely. This is also one of my favorite palettes for Christmas. The only minus maybe is this shade right here, which very much reminds me of this blue shade from uh, So Blooming palette that I mentioned. So it's more chunky. There's a lot of fallout when I'm using it, but it's only one shade and still it's pretty beautiful. It's it's purple. It has to be beautiful. So <laughs> it's, it's still beautiful shade, but even if we will forget about this one shade, this is really pretty majestic palette with gorgeous metallic shades. They are just pretty. This shade, Vanity, is duochrome. I am never able to catch this, uh, this shift on camera. Every time I'm using this shade, I can't I can't catch this shift. It's from pink to gold, like from the biscuit pink, something like that. So gorgeous shade, Immaculate, which is very nice. Also white gold, this time not like topper, pure white gold metallic shade. I just have big sentiment to this palette, but overall it's really nice palette. This is the top, the top of this ranking. And when I combine this palette, when I'm going to use them as whole, not as two separate palettes, then I think we have everything. Because we have enough amount of matte shades, but in the same time we have enough amount of shimmer shades, either these more metallic ones or these extremely blinding with a lot of particles. My fat at the end of this video. Somehow, although Nabla has good palettes, for example, side by side is pretty good palette. I think that just this formula isn't it, you know? It's not the same formula in my opinion. Still good formula, still these shades. I don't know how they did that <laughs> because in touch, this matte formula isn't so creamy anymore. It's not like in dreamy or so blooming palette. But in the same time, it's still pigmented. I still like to work with these shades. I still like to play with them. I don't have any issues to do my eye makeup, but I feel like it's not it. And uh, the more I'm thinking of it, the more I think that there's not much heart anymore into all of this. While doing this ranking, I need to think a lot, a lot about, well, all these palettes, and uh, also launches and uh, how all of that uh, looked like and how I felt back then and honestly the last two yeah two years are just meh just eh, they are not so exciting anymore if you would like to ask what will be next when we are talking about Nabla palettes or Nabla in general, well, I will quote one very famous character from very famous movies. Difficult to see, 
always in motion is the future. <laughs> so, I hope that you enjoyed this video and this whole ranking, as well as my previous video with all those Nabla stuff. You have no idea <laughs> how much time I needed to record all those swatches once again, because all those swatches you saw in this video, I recorded once again. I actually, I don't even sat here, but I was standing here hurting my back and swatching every single shade from all those 14 eyeshadow palettes. It was insane. So please, at least the like, okay? I never ask for it, but if you can, share this video anywhere you can, because it was a really huge video for, for me to do. Help me make this video more popular. It cost me a lot of work and time, and I really hope that you enjoyed it. That will be it for today's video. In my next videos, we're going back to Carnival and Interstellar. Uh, let me know, by the way, which Nabla palette is your favorite one, or maybe you've never tried Nabla, so tell me which palette you are the most interested in. And that will be it in today's video. I really, really hope you enjoyed it. And as always, uh, I love love you very very much and I see you soon. <laughs> Bye!